Are we not NASCAR fans now? Oh my oh gosh. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Our car won. Oh my gosh. Really? I love how we've taken ownership. Haven't we though? Yes, our 20. Car. Our car. Headed to NASCAR, super excited. A subscriber, Tim, works for Toyota. He reached out to us months ago and said, hey, uh, how would you guys like to come to NASCAR and I'll hook you up with some hot passes and I'll give you a tour of the garage. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, when is it again? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We immediately said yes. We are now, we relocated Ginger from Carefree out to Buckeye. I've never been this excited about moving the trail. I know, I haven't either. Normally moving is kind of a pain in the butt. I'm kind of curious to see if I need to drop the hitch. I suspect I'm gonna to need to drop the hitch and just kind of see, you know, how it how it pulls over to there. Anyhow, so I'm gonna go hook up. Okay, oh, parking brake. Okay, I gotta show you this. Okay, there's the backup camera. This is the fifth and wheel camera. And that's the camera. fifth wheel camera. And then Car Caleb, zoom in. Okay. And that's the little dotted lines to back up. How cool is that? We're gonna see how much the truck goes down. I just, I, I feel like the truck isn't actually gonna go pull better. Do you think they're gonna? You're disappointed that it sagged, huh? Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, disappointed. you thought you thought it was like a invincible machine. Yeah. It's almost comical how these truck manufacturers they make these things to hook on. It's like it's like it's some sort of jigsaw puzzle. It's crazy to me that the, the manufacturers haven't realized that this is what you're hooking. Okay, so we parked on level surface and there's just a slight sag, not much. It certainly looks safe and the trailer is absolutely level. So you wouldn't have to add air if you weren't CDO. And if you don't know what CDO is, it's a more severe condition of OCD where the letters have to be alphabetized. But let me just give you a little view here of what it looks like. This is the inaugural tow. Inaugural? Is that the right term? Yeah. So far, so good. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. There's some things I have to I'm do. I'm not even driving and I know it's amazing. Yeah, it does, it does feel a little effortless. Okay, so now that we have gone down the road a little bit, I have some thoughts. Okay. One thought is, <clears throat> this is Carefree Highway and it is a really bumpy road, if yes. you can't tell. And I don't feel like we're getting jerked around by the trailer. No, it feels very nice. But once I get up to 40, 50, 60 miles per hour, I'm at literally 1,200 to 1,500 RPMs to sustain that. That's pretty handy. We're now on our way to NASCAR to meet Tim and kind of get a lay of the land. It's Friday and we want to just kind of like get the credentials. We want to understand like what the parking situation is. Look at all those RVs out there. Yeah. Wow, that reminds me of the balloon fiesta. It's RVs everywhere. everywhere. It's Look. a city of RVs. Look that at the flags. is amazing and everyone has a flag. Trish, we need to keep your daydream flag for the RV. That I can get behind. You can? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. a big American flag and, and a keep your daydream flag. Daydream. And when the Do boys are like misbehaving, We'll bring that flag down. Okay. There are so many flags flying. This is so much fun. I wish we had our rig right here. I, I, I totally. Look okay, at this. so if you want to come to NASCAR, you got to bring your rig, but that means you have to plan ahead. Yes. You know that when the the party's here. Oh, for sure. When the races are done, that's just the preamble. Yeah, that's like yeah, a warm up. Yeah, yeah. That's stretching. Okay. <laughs> this is where the party is.
Okay, hello from Phoenix International Raceway, NASCAR. What? <laughs> what? I can't hear anything anymore. All right, it is so crazy loud here and already so much fun. And the, the idea of Friday was to get the lay of the land. We hooked up with uh, Tim. <laughs> Good to meet you, finally. Good to meet you. Yeah. Hi. You know the crew? And he took us him. and he hooked us up with the hot passes. We went back and we checked out the four Toyota cars that he kind of like make sure they're all finely tuned. And they were pushing cars around. They were basically going through like a uh, a check program. Like the guy behind me, I just, can you turn on to stop talking? We're trying to do a vlog here. Anyway, so they're pushing the cars around. They're pulling them in. They're trying. They're going through. Um, I forgot what he said, but it was some sort of like they have to. They do a tech check. We're basically we like, need a tech check. I know. We're basically like the gear ratios, all the stuff gets checked to make sure no one's pushing the envelope. They all push the envelope a little bit. So sometimes they went in and there were a couple cars that went back and they had to go get checked again because the gear ratio might have just been a little too favorable. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. The cars are starting now and they're all qualifying. And so we're going to hang out here for a little bit and uh, get some footage of them qualifying. And then the plan is that Trish and I are going to come here Saturday morning. We're going to go down into the garage and then we're going to come back on Sunday for a complete race day. Morning to the afternoon. The race is going to start at 1 p.m. It's going to be a fun weekend. I hope you're excited. Okay, here they go, here they go. Here they go. Couple of little tips when you park out in the general parking for NASCAR. Put a pin where you parked. And like don't I'm wash in, your car before you come. I feel like I'm in Indiana Jones, you know, where like he finds the yes. jewels or whatever. Yes. This wraps up day one of NASCAR. Trisha and I are going to be here bright and early in the morning. And uh, we're just going to share as much as we can with you of our experience at NASCAR. Because I think that's really all we're permitted to do. All we're allowed to do. <laughs> Here, wait, I'll be a race, race car. <laughs> I, heard, I, heard a, I heard a comedian once. He says, let me give you an impersonation of what it's like to be at a nat car race. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you got everybody going over there. <laughs> Can you even hear us? Welcome oh. to America. This is amazing. You know what I'm so surprised about? How this quiet it is. <laughs> this is a total adrenaline rush. It is. But the guys over here in the pit, they're not running and scrambling. They're meticulous. They come in strong. They have their tires. Yeah. They have their fuel. They're amazing. Right now we're in practice round. And, and as you probably know, there are two practice rounds. They go on the first practice round so they can find out exactly how to set these cars up correctly. So last night was qualifying. We are talking to Tim about it. And Tim said the way that you would set up a car to go fast for five laps wouldn't quite be the same way you would set up a car to go for the race. So now they're changing it. And it's not just the race. It's what your competitors are doing. Okay, so why don't you share with everyone a little NASCAR history. This is how it goes. Back, way back in the day, you know, when there was Prohibition, they were building these cars so that they could run from the cops <laughs> with their alcohol. Now, NASCAR technically has nothing to do with that because Prohibition was over in the mid-30s, and NASCAR wasn't official until 1948. But really, that's where the roots came. But their first race was in Daytona Beach. And that's when the family, Big Billy, got a hold of the rights. He owns NASCAR, and it was just recently handed down to his grandson in 2003. But what they did was they made rules. They said, hey, this is how we're going to operate. And with those rules came sponsorships. So yeah, that's and a lot of them really started getting big. Starting again. It's starting again. It's so starting it's again. not quite very long around here. These cars up, the drivers come in, they come in fast. They leave fast, they come around, and you can tell the more laps they take, the feistier they get. You can yes. tell they're just getting a little punchy. Yeah. There were two guys that were like literally like trying to pass each other just to get to the back to their garage first. Yes. Anyhow. So, so it, this little guy right here would be your best friend though. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Alright, so that is it for now. We just came out here to like understand a little bit more. Tomorrow's the big day, so why don't we just skip right now? We are on race day. Who's and ready? From the sounds of it, I think Kyle Busch was uh, introduced because the crowd didn't sound too happy. Anyhow, we are right down here in the pit 
the pick box for uh, DeWall and Circle K. Driver number 20. And uh, this whole thing is just ridiculously fun. The scale is enormous. From the sound to the people to the excitement. It's amazing. We were sitting up in the, in the pit box and we were kind of looking at the view up there. And then Tim was kind enough to give us a tour of the uh, Circle K hauler. Oh my gosh. Which is where his office see. is. Up in the front, you know, like, you know, it's where you see. You got a nice little window seat up there. All right, all right. I know yeah. how he rolls yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, unfortunately, you know, I, we didn't want to take the chance of like recording something that was confidential. Yeah. But I will tell you, it's a long hallway with really cool lighting and everything super flush where they have spare parts for absolutely everything on that car. <laughs> everything. That's amazing. And then they go up to the front and that's where all the computers are, that's where the engineers are, that's where all the laptops are. And then there's this little secret hatch and they keep the two cars on the second floor of the hallway. That's incredible. And Tim was saying that basically they're working as hard as they can every week to keep it under 80,000 pounds because it just carries so much stuff. So wow. the whole thing wow. is fascinating. It is, absolutely. If I'm not asking a million questions, Caleb's asking <laughs> Tim a million questions. But Caleb's know. questions are all the same. Like, wait, hold on, how much what money? Voice is horse. I know. Yeah, I know. That's how many questions he's asking. I know. The, the other thing I learned yes. is that the guys who manage the jacks are really big guys. <laughs> I think I saw a couple of them walking this way. I, they don't even need to say anything. They're just they're, walking. They're enormous. <laughs> Tim was saying the reason they need to be so big is yeah. they got to swing that jack around pretty much with one hand and they got to do it quick. And they're the first ones that do it, right? So they got to get out there, they got to get that jack over, and then one crank that car's up. Wow. Anyhow, you want to manage, you want to lift the jack? Yeah, oh, I can definitely. I can definitely. Okay. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> There's a handle down there. Yeah, right Go down here? there. Right here? Yeah. Left hand on the handle. All right, I think it's pretty obvious what happened here today. Uh, there was a sweep up. Matt Kenseth, car number 20, crushed. And we were actually in his hauler this morning. <laughs> Nobody could have predicted that. I think we were good luck. Except, oh, totally. <laughs> Except for these boys. They said they were rooting for him the whole time. Whole time. I didn't change once, but 24 was like about to beat him. Last like two laps. I knew he was going to win. And, I knew it. And you, and you got the 20 hat this morning. And I got the 20 hat. Look at that. Look at that. But if I have a suggestion, you have to get the headphones. This is Caleb's suggestion, is getting these. Then you get the inside scoop. They were a bit pricey, but I'll tell you what, it really made the race uh, very interesting because we knew exactly what was going on all the time. Basically, there were a couple times where uh, the driver brakes overheated and the, something happened with some, a part on the brakes flew off and it went in and it caught two different fires. And the announcer says they had never seen it ever 
all the cars were basically just stopped, and they were putting two different fires out from brakes over here. That was pretty cool. So those headsets, we wouldn't really know what's going on. We would have been in the dark. Yeah. So, definitely get those. But I'll tell you what, the whole NASCAR experience is like, exhilarating. It's unbelievable. It's a huge rush. Right back here, that's Victory Lane. The car comes in. If you've never been to a NASCAR race, the car comes in. Everyone's shaking champagne. The fireworks go off. Glitter. The whole thing. Yeah. It's amazing. Then Tim told us that they load up the trucks fast. He says everyone pretty much wants to get home. <laughs> and uh, all the crews back on the plane like that. He says all those semi-trucks get loaded. They're going to go to Miami ASAP. Orange Crush. Orange Crush. Yes, and she's got a six speed in her. Ready? Got the clutch, you got your foot on the brake? Clutch is in, brake is on. Okay, move it. Tammy was nice enough to let me start this awesome Camaro, and that thing rumbled. The camera started shaking. Anyway, boys really like it. Caleb wants to restore an old car. I'll tell you one of my favorite things, fans. Oh my gosh. They're, the conversations, everything that was going on in the stands. I mean, uh, there are drivers that come out, they're booing them, then the commentators are talking on the radio about the fact that, well, maybe after what happened a couple weeks ago. So I mean, there are some mm -hmm. true fans. But, you know, they would like... Well, then they said, well, there's a possible rivalry. The fans don't forget. And then the that's fans right. were like, that's right, we don't forget. And then they go right into all the diatribe about what mm -hmm. went on and, you know, how one player dissed another one and he's going to make a breakout. Da, 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 da. It's really... But fun. then when someone makes a good move, everyone's cheering and they're clapping as the cars yeah. are driving by. And, and there's just so much camaraderie. There's so much politeness. Trish and I said yesterday, wow. it is the most polite fans you'll ever in any event you'll ever come across it's, yeah. it's, they do it's boo when a bad guy comes well yeah they, oh, boo, yeah they boo the thing they got a lot of passion but they anyway passion, i mean but it's, it's very like excuse me pardon <laughs> ma'am sir and anyone who serves for this country it's hats off and applaud